Okay, um, welcome to the second video of the site massing exercise. And um, one of the things to do, sort of note, at least for this exercise, uh, we're not going to kind of obsess too much about what the actual heights in the buildings are, as long as they're somewhat um, reasonable. Uh, the sort of quick and easy way is actually just to kind of go to Google Maps and do your best guesstimate off of like what you can see on the side, like how many levels this building has, or the shadow, that sort of thing. Or uh, since you kind of probably know the campus, uh, you know, decently well, uh, what you remember of how many stories these buildings um, are. But in a normal sort of situation, what you usually do is either the GIS map will have how many stories uh, each building has on sort of marked on top of it, like, you know, four or five, whatever, so sort of each section, uh, and or you do a site visit and you print out this sort of site map and you mark basically manually like you know as you sort of walk around how many stories like each of these buildings are right but we don't have that information um, at our on our hands right now but uh, that's not really the point of the exercise but just sort of do your best guess okay uh, so sort of returning back to what we were looking at earlier you basically want to fix any of these situations where like these are all uh, open curves right so you might have to look at it and say, well, you know, are these joinable? They're not joinable, and why are they not joinable? Uh, and one of the ways to kind of really figure out where all the you know, problems are, just select segment, segment, start the join command, and just start clicking, right? And sort of work your way either clockwise or counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. Work your way around. When you do something like this, it'll say, okay, you know, that's really close. So when you actually really zoom in and you'll have sometimes you'll have to zoom in a lot to actually figure it out what's really wrong uh, and this just really goes back to you know how well you know, that sort of original CAD drawing was done <clears throat> okay now this this one in particular seems like there's a fair bit of fixing that needs to be done uh, so you know for, for it's it's sort of a pain um, if something is this fragmented, right, and if I try to join any of these, and you'll note that I'm sort of picking the end of the line that's closer to it, right? If it's like these sort of minute little differences, you know, sometimes like this will actually take more work to rejoin rather than, you know, you it might be worth it just to retrace it, basically, and say, you know, screw that, I'm just gonna sort of go through and you know, turn on some of those things and just like say, okay, you know, it's actually just faster. Uh, whoops, undo. It's actually just faster to kind of retrace this stuff. And you, at this point, you can also kind of ask yourself whether or not a lot of that detail is really necessary, but you know. And if you're doing this, it's actually probably a good idea to turn off some of the snaps, like the int, the perp, the mid. Uh, you can probably leave that on, but basically you're working with the end snap in particular. Okay, so uh, I had one overall curve right and then one that's like that and this is slightly off so I will just turn on my edit points by using F10 to fix it and just drag that point uh, so it snaps all right okay so now you have these sort of over overlapping curves right and um, usually what I do is I use the sort of boundary crossing selection method like that so it will only select curves that are within it right and uh, that way you can sometimes just sort of dial out or select things. Uh, otherwise, uh, the sort of other trick I use sometimes is, you know, to kind of select a larger sort of curve, right? And you can basically sort of move it up a certain distance that you know and then move it back afterwards, right? Or, uh, you know, so in this case, let's move it up 100 feet. It's out of the way, and then you can see. Okay, you know these are the ones I really want to delete. Uh, these curves, I don't need that, right? And then once you know things are cleared out, then move it back, right? 
Okay, so that's one way of dealing with that and just not having duplicate curves in the same place. Uh, let's find one that we can actually fix. Okay, so this guy, so this is complete. This guy is not. Uh, this looks okay, you know, and maybe this wants to be its own thing. And you can see that, you know, sometimes uh, things weren't connected very well, right? Uh, so situations like this, uh, sometimes you'll you, you'll kind of have to just make a judgment, right? And uh, okay, that works. This doesn't. So you might just like delete this, right? You know, that's roughly perpendicular. Turn on the edit points, just drag it until it intersects, right? And if it's not perpendicular, that's jutting out, then just select this, do the trim command, TR, and then trim that off. Right, so, okay. And uh, maybe these are three different segments, so this guy actually just really wants to come down here. And I'll just use, because I have, this is the only active layer of present. So I will just sort of go through ending. So like, yeah, you'll see stuff like this, right? So actually let's fix this first. Extend EX with the boundary object in that, right? Or in TR trim, right? Uh, yeah, there's some weird stuff on this. So let's go through and join this, join it. That's good, that's no, no good. And so when you get one that's no good, then you just sort of drag out. See, these are a lot. Drag out the point, and then just drag it back, make sure it's snapping correctly, right? And just join that. No. You'll notice that it does let you force join, but if you do that, your your um, extrudes are going to fail, right? So you don't want to do that because of this, right? So let's join that next segment. And okay, uh, situation like this, uh, you can run the connect command and just select first curve, second curve it automatically makes them so they'll touch. So let's join that. Uh, actually, that's not, let me see where the other, okay. So there was one other thing here, and yeah, so you'll have to fix this. Uh, let's just move this down, snap it over, okay. Join and make sure that once you join and it looks like it's a closed curve, that it is a closed curve, right? Sometimes you'll join it and it's still an open curve, so that extrude will fail as well. All right, then let's finish this. Blah blah blah. No. And snap it to the end. Okay. So select the curve we just drew and try to join it with this and make sure that it's closed. All right, so you have that and that's closed. Uh, one of the other examples was, okay, here, for example, if you zoom in, you obviously see that, right? So extend EX, boundary object first. So select that as a boundary object, space bar, what you want to extend, which is these guys, so extend, click on it, extend it over. Right. And then you just do the same thing. Uh, smaller ones like this, I just, right. you can duplicate it. If you want things to be exactly uh, base loops, and if you want things to be sort of exactly the same, then you will want to do something like this. What I do is I, I copy this out, right? So there's a duplicate. Select this one and then trim. Use the TR command to actually just trim out the, out, the outside. And I guess this is really not touching. Uh, yeah, so like if you zoom in, you'll see that this is actually not touching. So you'll have to extend that to this as well. Okay, so make sure that both ends are touching. Then you can use the trim command and trim that off, right? So you'll get these 
that you can join together, you know that that's like basically a closed curve, right? Um, sometimes I will just draw something really quick like this, right? So I can delete this and then I can move this into place. Oop. So I know exactly it's there, delete that. All right, uh, but basically we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go through and do this to, you know, the sort of parts of the map that I am concerned with, which I believe, uh, so actually it's good at this point to actually pretty, just like write this out and say, okay, this is the landscape. This is another layer that we're concerned with. And I think the other one was, so this is water. Water. And I think the green was the main roads. And the brown, I believe. Secondary. Oops. Okay. In general, like these are really the layers that we're concerned with. Everything else, you know, it's kind of like it's not that important. So this is the cluster. These are the information that I'm really most concerned with. Now, if you want to know uh, if there's like, let's say this sort of zero layer, you know, okay, it's probably that building right there. Uh, the new one that's going up, right? Uh, the planned one. Um, but if there's stuff on these layers that you just really don't need, you can just delete the layers outright. And you can like open the layer, right click on it, and say, you know, select objects. And it will you can zoom in and it'll kind of show you what it'll highlight what those things are. Right? And you can say, well, is that something that you actually really need? Or if you don't, just delete the layer. Uh, or hide it. These are the basketball courts, for example, right? And at least over here, if I don't need it, I can actually just delete it. It will say oh, it has objects. Just say yes, right? And they disappear. Right? So, uh, I, since we're just sort of turning them off, um, I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just going to move all this into the unused. Make the red building layer active, drag that in. Okay, so there's just like cleaning things up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't need that either. And just make sure that you have the information that you really need. Okay. Now, uh, going back to the building layer, uh, one layer on. I am just going to go through and you know fix this stuff and, and you know um, this is probably going to get fast forward. So if it's a simple fix like this, then you just use the edit points and you know do whatever you know what whatever seems to be right. So we run into something like this where it looks like it's closed, but it's not. It doesn't. It's not exploded, and you'll find things like that, like that little corner. Um, so you know, connect. Join it back, and it's closed. So one of the other tricks sometimes you can use is this thing called the closed curve. It was a one curve closed curve by adding lines. If there's like just like maybe one little line segment that's missing, uh, the closed curve the command will actually just add it in and close it for you. Uh, so it might come in handy, although it's a little bit less, um, it's a little bit less definite.
All right, that looks about it uh, for everything that's sort of inside uh, the boundaries of this. Um, there's some really small ones that are like, you know, like this, you know, for a massing model, you know, we really don't need that sort of really minutiae. Um, so I will actually just take that out. These are probably just bus stops. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of have to exercise your judgment a little bit as to what's necessary and uh, what's not, right? Uh, the massing model is more concerned with the larger massing of things. Um, actually, let me leave that in. Okay, so that's, you're done with the sort of building layer. And uh, let's move on. We're not going to do anything to the roads, right? The roads are just there to kind of depict and let us know. What we actually want to do is something, do something about is uh, some of the landscape, not all of it, right? Uh, there's a lot of topography in here, which we're not going to be able to deal with really. Uh, but it's actually, sometimes it's actually just good to be able to kind of depict uh, certain things. Now the same uh, principle applies here. What we're going to think about doing is basically these sort of patches of grass, right? Which are grass patches, right? These patches of grass, we're going to try to make them into surfaces and just sort of extrude them a tiny little bit so they have a little bit of thickness in the model. Uh, eventually you can maybe sort of apply um, a green grass material to it and then leave everything else as you know, road basically. So that's that's the general idea. As you can see, the landscape is really fragmented, right? And obviously you can sort of go through and say, okay, let's try to join everything, you know, little bit by little bit. Right? Still pain in the ass, right? Uh, so same thing, right? Select uh, if you kind of select that landscape layer, right click on it, one layer on, so everything else is off, right? Uh, this is probably just, yeah, this is stuff that's, and uh, to kind of take care of that, you should just like select everything and make sure the display color is by layer, so it all comes back to the sort of blue color, right? So select everything and join. And I'll basically try to join in, so okay, you know, some closed curves, some open. And same thing, right, you can click on it and say, well, obviously some are open, right? But the ones that are kind of like this, uh, that you originally kind of had to go through one by one, they just get joined together. Um, there are some things like this that obviously, okay, you want to fix that. So let's now connect this to this, okay. And you'll see that when it joins correctly, it'll flash uh, to tell you, let you know that that's a closed curve. There are some like this. Uh, I forgot what this actually looks like. It's like the corner plaza. It's sort of ambiguous, right? Um, so, you know, make your best assumption. Uh, let's just kind of do it. I would say you don't have to obsess about every single one of these, but just kind of do it for the obvious ones, right? And these are the ones uh, you probably just want to kind of fix the ones that are clearly, you know, so this close curve, right? Just close it. Uh, fix the ones that are more kind of in this region. And if you turn on the buildings, then you'll see like, okay, you'll get ones that are sort of like this because they just kind of share an edge with the building, right? And that's why they're open, you know? Uh, it's up to you. You can basically, what I usually do, um, if it's it seems feasible, right? Like the sort of geometry of the building isn't too complicated. It's easy to trace. I just make sure I have the landscape layer active, right? The, the layer that you're drawing on active. And then, you know, just do this, right? Uh, then you kind of select that curve you just made and you join it with this sort of outside curve, right? And so it's uh, usually, it's just sort of, you know, simple but dumb. You know, just sort of join it with the outside curve, right? There are situations like that. Sometimes, sometimes you'll run into situations where um, 
that sort of outside curve like this like gets a little bit more complicated right and can be a pain in the be behind to kind of like oh, I have to trace all these uh, one by one so uh, the way actually to kind of deal with that and you know you'll want to make sure that this stuff is working as well looking correctly so this is joined together okay is that let's say if I'm using this as an example uh, what I will do is actually I, I will actually just take this guy and duplicate it to the landscape layer All right so select this uh, select the landscape layer right click on it right and say copy objects to layer copy it over right and then hide it and you'll see that I just got a copy of that building outline right now I know that these are the patches that need this sort of boundary, right? And so provided that they're all like connected, then I use the trim command, trim. And then I trim out everything that should be sort of out. Now, this actually, before you do that, and you'll see that's why it's sort of disappearing like that, it means that these aren't actually touching it, right? So you'll have to either extend, make sure that they're you know, uh, they're either too long or too short, right? So you'll you'll sometimes have to go in. Okay, these are too long, so these actually have to trim out. Uh, that uh, the ones that are too short, you have to extend. But basically, this this method only works if uh, the geometries are you know touching correctly. And uh, from this, you can see why we really, really hate it when people don't snap their drawings uh, correctly because it makes it a pain in the behind for anyone who's sort of behind or like who's taking on the file and trying to work with it. So select these guys, trim, uh, click on the outside, which will trim this. This is the line we want. We want to trim this off. We want to trim this off. Turn this off. Okay, so join. It's closed. This, this, join. It's closed. Join. Join. All right. So these are all closed curves now. So you basically have that. Make sense? Okay. So this and you know, some of these I'm just not going to worry about too much. Uh, we don't have enough sort of information really in this file to like make a complete you know, uh, landscape boundary, right? Okay, so that's a sort of like cleaning up process of stuff like that. Um, there's stuff here that's missing, but for the purpose of your exercises, uh, to sort of focus like on the stuff that's around, generally around this area. So let's say you're sort of done with all that, right? Um, let's go to actually the perspective view, control all, and zoom into it, and find your stuff. Okay. And um, one of the, well, I would say tricks maybe, uh, you want to make a new layer and say, let's say, I don't know, just call it grass, uh, make a green, it's green grass. Okay, and make it active, All right? Uh, you can move this up and down like that. And so it's just below the landscape. Now, uh, hide the building layer. So just the landscape and the new grass layer that are open, right? Um, and turn off all the unused ones, maybe lock it.
So I'm going to select all the closed curves, right? And uh, just to kind of save time, I'm actually going to try to deselect everything that's not within that sort of main region that I'm concerned with. So with this sort of selection set, uh, hold down the control key and just sort of drag, right? So you deselect stuff that's within that boundary, right? Uh, so do that. I really don't need any of this here. Uh, we'll just leave some of that small stuff in place. So holding down the control key as you're doing this, right? Which basically modifies the selection. I don't need any of that. Tiny little stuff. Okay. So with these selected, uh, you're using the planar surface, right? Surface from planar curves command. And with the grass active, click on it and just say OK. Uh, it might take a couple seconds for it while it's thinking, and it'll. It might look like it's okay. Yeah, it might look like it's crashed, but just let it run, right? And I'll do this, right? So these are basically sort of grass surfaces. Um, you can actually do these as extrusions as well, although it'll be a little bit more processor intensive. So uh, usually I just do these simple planes first, right? And the second thing you probably want to do is actually kind of get the sort of boundary framework around it or just like a ground uh, to it, right? Uh, you can simply, uh, and I would just put that on the default layer, and make the default layer active. Uh, you can simply just like make a big plane around this whole thing, right? So it just covers it like that. Now, because of that, um, the grass that you just made and the sort of main plane are going to be coplanar, right? They're going to share the same plane. So I would actually just use the gumball and and just nudge this sort of big plane down just a tiny little bit. So this, this is in uh, feet, right? So let's just uh, do negative uh, 0 0.1, something really small. But that will actually just raise the grass just enough so they don't interfere anymore, right? Now you can, uh, just so you don't drag this accidentally, you can put it on a separate layer, lock it or whatever, or I'll just use the lock command to lock it, which makes it gray and you can't actually select it anymore. Right? That's a, another command that I sometimes use. All right. So we're done with the landscape. Now let's just do the buildings, uh, which is sort of the fun part, right? Um, and sort of referring to this, what you can do, what you do is you just basically sort of click through and you've done the sort of hard work beforehand, right? So you can just extrude all these guys, not that tall, uh, but extrude it and say, well, you know, um, if you're guessing, you know, how many stories the building is and how many feet it should be, right? Uh, so one story is, you know, 10, 12 feet, whatever. Uh, four stories, 48, so you know, 50 feet. Just like start with some sort of standard, right? So, and uh, just sort of go around and you know, uh, extrude all your masses. Extrude curve, make sure that you know, solid is on so you get sort of capped ends, the direction is all good, and then you can just sort of put type in, you know, I'd put 50 there. This is three stories, so let's say 36. I don't know how big this is, there's still 36. 50. Uh, and uh, like I said, we're not you know, too concerned about you know, being completely accurate, but just sort of kind of give a sense of uh, what that would look like, Cardi. And um, if you're extruding things the same height, you can actually just keep on extruding them. Just like spacebar, 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 spacebar. It, because the command actually remembers uh, what your previous extrusion distance was. Um, so it's kind of, you know, handy that way. Now actually let's do... And you can select, if you know that these are the same, you can obviously you can select more of them sort of together. Extrude them. Okay. 
So that's uh, basically roughly it. Uh, what we're looking for is something like this. Um, as your sort of final output and just save the file. Um, the other thing you can do really with this, or if you don't like how the sort of boundary ends, uh, you can actually use, let's say, the green layer. You know, actually, let's do that. Uh, turn on the main roads. One layer on. Okay, so the green layer here, and say, well, I might want to create your own um, sort of outline for this. Uh, I try not to modify original information if I can. Uh, this, is a, this color is just so hard to see. So yeah, okay. Um, I try not to modify original information if I can, um, but so you can make a new layer and just call it, let's say, site bounds. Okay. So, uh, you know, in this case, I will, for example, copy you know, some of the main main uh, defining geometries. Just to get the rough outline. Okay, and copy it to that site bounds uh, layer. You can active, close this. Okay, so we're just gonna try to fix or rejoin this very roughly. It doesn't really have to be all that um, precise. Um, very roughly. It doesn't really have to be all that um, precise. What I'm trying to do is to make a big boundary out of this. Um, and uh, as before, uh, depending on you know how the lines were drawn, that sort of thing, you might have to fix things a little bit. Um, very roughly, it doesn't really have to be all that um, precise. Okay, so this is a closed curve now. And um, remember this, right? So um, this I locked, but basically you can take this closed curve and make a surface out of it, right? Uh, change, let's change the site boundary color to that dark gray, right? And um, this originally that I had there, I'm going to type unlock. So unlocks everything on the scene, just delete it. Uh, use the gumball, same thing, just sort of move it down, negative 0.1 units. This boundary that's sort of uh, around it, or the line, the curve that's around it, you can delete at this point. And uh, let's kind of show everything back. All right, so that's, you know, if you're trying to make a more irregular boundary. Uh, but basically this is, you know, Sort of what you're we're looking for uh to sort of extrude some of those buildings they don't have to be you know to scale or they don't have to be exactly but just kind of get a sense and you'll this is basically what a massing model would look like uh generally